Warning, the following video contains mentions of rape and sexual abuse. Viewer discretion is advised. In the Philippines, 12-year-olds are considered legally capable of consenting to sex. This number is the lowest age of consent among all Asian countries and the second lowest compared to the rest of the world. It is now 2021, yet the age of consent in the Philippines has remained the same since 1930. When 12-year-olds are prohibited from purchasing condoms, lubricants, and other reproductive health products, let alone watch movies and TV shows without adult supervision, how could they possibly consent to something as serious as sex? The age of consent is defined as the age at which one is considered legally competent to give their consent, especially to marriage and sexual intercourse. While this number may vary largely between countries, its common goal is to protect children from older individuals who may take advantage of them sexually. It also serves as grounds for setting the proper age at which adolescents may engage in safe consensual sex. According to Act Number 3815 or the Revised Penal Code of the Philippines, sex with a child below the age of 12 is considered rape. However, studies show that 12 years of age is too low for one to fully understand sex and its possible consequences, especially since the brain is only about halfway developed in one's teenage years and continues to develop way past their 20s. A recent report by the National Bureau of Investigation revealed that about 17.1% of children aged 13 to 18 years old experienced any form of sexual violence while growing up. Additionally, perpetrators are most often family members and more boys than girls experience such sexual violence based on the National Baseline Study on Violence Against Children. This has sparked years of outrage among many Filipinos and international organizations urging our lawmakers to raise the age of consent. As of late 2020, raising the age of consent from 12 to 16 years old has been approved in both the House and Senate levels. House Bill 7836 and Senate Bill 2332 also further expands the definition of what is considered as rape, uses more gender-neutral language to protect children from predators of any gender, includes sweetheart clauses that protect young couples that engage in consensual, non-abusive sex, and attempts to repeal the Forgiveness Clause, which actually excuses an offender from criminal liability should they be forgiven by or married to their victim. Yes, you heard that correctly. Thankfully, that is bound to change once the bill is made into law. While this sounds all right and dandy, the process of approving a bill and having it made law is quite complex. What you do need to know is that as of the research period for this video, the Senate bill is currently pending its second reading. However, the progress we see today has long been overdue, which prompted more clamor for the government to act on the legislation with more urgency. Although the process of amending our existing laws has been a long and slow journey, the Philippines seems to be making strides in the right path towards a safer country for its children. Still, there is much that needs to be done beyond legislation to further mitigate sexual abuse in the country. There remains the need to remove the stigma from proper sexual education, to raise awareness on reproductive health, and improve the availability of judgment-free reproductive health services, especially to the youth. like this video, please share this with your family and friends so we can continue the conversation on reproductive health in the Philippines. Give us a like to show your support, leave your thoughts down in the comment section, subscribe to the channel, and follow us on our social media platforms. Huge thank you to our partners for helping make this video happen. Our primary partner, Project Laan. Project Laan envisions a society where every Filipino, especially the poor and vulnerable, has a depth knowledge on public health and is empowered to make informed and appropriate health decisions. Our secondary partners, the Pre-Medical Society of the Ateneo. No other org has lives on the line. And University of the Philippines Psychological Understanding for Growth and Distinction Society, towards making psychology for all. And our tertiary partner, UP Manila Peer Empowering Peer Society. Thank you all for helping this video reach the Filipino youth. Thank you for watching.